New, 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 new. All right, let's do it. First up, okay. speaking of Adabox, Adabox 07. Yeah, we got the retail version of Adabox 07 in. So you don't get as much stuff as when you have the subscriptions. That's why you want to subscribe, because you get more stuff. Yeah. However, you do get some good stuff. You get um, the Gemma M0, and you get the lock pick kit, lock, uh, uh, lock sport kit, lock pick kit, uh, the clear padlock, the SDR RTL, um, the... Uh, fabric, the metallic fabric, some components to go with the Gemma, and you can do some spy themed products. This is the spy and hacker themed box. Okay, next up. Um, we have uh, two more sizes, diversions of the Malone E-Tape 5 inch. These are liquid sensors. So this is the plain unjacketed version. It's just like the E-Tape and it, it, the conductivity of um, the pins changes with how much liquid is in it. So you kind of press this up against the side of your container, you pour liquid in and you can measure the resistance and it will tell you, you can convert that to inches of depth. Okay, next up. There's also a nicer version um, that is jacketed and I think I will show both of these off just because yeah. they're a little the different. This, the jacketed version is just has um, the enclosure but it's otherwise very, it's basically the same thing, but this is just that raw flexible tape, but it's a little delicate. Uh, we provide you some a plug to plug into the pins, but um, this one is really nice because it's got this nice hard jacket. The liquid can still go in, but you're less likely to have this bend or crease. And it also has this nice, um, you know, sturdy connector, so you don't have to solder any pins. It's, this is kind of the better, higher quality version. But if you don't mind DIYing, this low cost version is maybe what you'd like. So there's two types and we now have this in five inch. We've already carried it in eight and 12, but some people are like, hey, I really want shorter. Now it's shorter. Okay. Good for liquid level measurements. Next up, we got the Onion Omega 2 starter kits. Yes, yeah, so these are two products. They're basically the same thing and I'll explain the difference. So both are starter kits for the Onion Omega 2 Plus. One is the starter kit, which has um, this. So you get the Onion Omega, you get the dock, get an LCD, you get a plug, get some components and wires and stuff. That's all really wonderful and great. Um, the maker kit, which is a little bit later. Uh, we'll go to the next one? Yeah, I'll just talk about what's in it and then I'll go into detail. This one has all the stuff that the starter kit has, plus it has the OLED add-on, the servo add-on, and um, the relay add-on. So that's the difference. There's just one has way more add-ons than the other, but the core chip inside is the same. So let's talk about that core chip. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the Onion Omega 2. This is based off of, um, oh boy, it's the, the Linkit. Oh, geez, I can't remember the part number anymore. It's like the 7688. Basically, it's an open WRT runnable chip. It's a chip that runs uh, lead or open WRT. It's a, it's, you know, it's kind of in between a microcontroller and a microcomputer. It's got a lot more power than your Arduino or CircuitPython or make code because it's actually running Linux inside. It also has Wi-Fi. You can see there's a little antenna here. Oops. There's an antenna here, an onboard antenna here. So it has Wi-Fi. It's running Linux. Um, there's an SD card slot. It comes with some built-in flash and memory. I think it has like 64 megs of flash and like 128 um, megs of RAM. It's not as powerful as a Raspberry Pi, but also doesn't use nearly as much power. So you're not gonna get like HDMI output. You can't run Minecraft or Node.js on it, but it's a small Linux computer that can run Python or C, C++ or Lua or shell scripting or Perl or Tickle TK, your, your less intense uh, programming. I mean, you can run JavaScript, you probably just can't run like every bonkers package that you want. Also, you, you can't fit it on there. Oh, but there's an SD card as well. So it's running w, OpenWRT, um, a, or a version of it called like OnionOS. And then you can have these plugins that it plugs into. So uh, this dock, which we recommend, so that's why we got the kits. You plug this in because uh, this is not breadboard friendly. Now you've got USB, so you can connect a USB camera or mouse or keyboard. Um, this is a serial uh, console chip, so you can connect to a serial console. Again, you're not gonna get a graphical interface. You have to SSH or use a serial console in. And then these are the GPIO available. So you get I squared C, 
Um, lots of GPIO. You get uh, Ethernet if you wanted to have Ethernet as an add-on that's built in natively into the chip. And then there's all these little add-ons that you can plug in. So there's a relay expansion. So you plug this into the dock and you've got uh, two micro relays. So like, okay, it's not gonna you know, power your washing machine, but for little uh, robotics projects, there's a little relay board that plugs into um, the dock. And then there's also uh, the OLED. So this is your standard you know, SSD 1306 OLED. And they use I squared C probably for it. Um, you plug it in and then you've got a little graphical display and you're not going to be able to play Doom on it But you know, you just want to have it print out some stats or details So it's great that it has that Linuxy power of you can run um, Real Linux programs on it. it's got a real TCP IP stack. It's got SD card storage It's a real operating system, but it doesn't use um, as much power as a full-blown Linux computer like a BeagleBone or a Raspberry Pi. It's also very compact and small and uh, doesn't have a ton of GPIO, but has enough to do a lot of stuff that you want with Maker stuff. You can uh, connect breakouts and use our Python code with it, or uh, write code in C, C++. So it's kind of in that middle ground. Um, we've got a nice uh, web programming interface for it. I think this is a, a really nice intermediate uh, space for when you're like, hey, I really just can't do the complexity I need to do. Um, in a microcontroller, but I don't want to go like bonkers and, and get a full computer. Uh, the onion is right there in the middle. Okay. Not too hot, not too sweet, not too bitter, just right. All right, next up. This is from... Pamaroni. One of our favorite folks up there. Yeah, Pamaroni. so they're starting to do, hold on, let me get rid of some of these bits. They're starting to do some micro bit things. And this, this is the noise is bit. The noise bit, so the... Um, the microbit does not come with a built-in speaker, but you can have it play um, P PWM effects um, through one of the pins if you connect a speaker and amplifier. This is what this does. Okay. You just plug it right in. Name that tune, folks. All right, so you plug this in, and then on the back you can see there's a speaker and amplifier. Maybe I'll play that again. <laughs> no, I'll show it, but I also wanted to yeah. get into the microphone. Can anyone guess the song? I don't know. Um, so this is uh, easy. It's a new product song. Do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. Yeah. yeah okay. um, you can program it in make code or uh, MicroPython. It's super easy. All it is is basically just an amplifier for the pin output. So any way that you have PWM signal coming out of pin zero, it will make music for you. Okay. Next up. And it's really easy. Just plug it in. In the Pimeroni world this week. Next up, there's a scroll bit. So this is kind of like the Charlie Plex uh, chip that they use for a bunch of um, Raspberry Pi stuff, but now it's available in bit format. You just plug it in and like you saw, it lights up, it's in white. And let me plug this in to this demo. Yeah, I can just show this off. It's really bright. Uh, again, they have MicroPython code and also um, make code, so you can scroll text or have icons. You know, basically anything you can do with this little 5x5 five five display, but now you've got like, I think, think, was it 7x17? Seven so it's a lot of pixels that you can uh, have a good time with, like 120 pixels of glorious scrolling text. So great when you need more than what's on here. And okay. it also just plugs in super easily. Next up, uh, I got a battery pack. Yeah, it's just a battery pack. Uh, four double A's, comes with a switch has a 2.1 millimeter DC jack on the end, They're useful for all sorts of projects. Yep. Um, have a dev board that takes about four to seven volts in, this will work just fine. Okay, next up, yay, it's here, it's the Feather Cricket. Feather Cricket. Okay, so you now like we're talking. Like feather, now you got, you got this. So the Cricket is our um, robotics development board that offloads all of the work that you would need to do with robotics. You can drive four servos, uh, two bi-directional DC motors, has four capacitive touch inputs, eight analog and digital signal I.O. pins that you can use to read potentiometers or buttons, um, four uh, uh, drive pins that are connected to uh, Darlington transistors. You can uh, connect two steppers to it if you want, or four servos, two DC motors. Like you, you have a, it doesn't do like everything, 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 but it does just enough to get what you want done. And what's 
best is um, you've got a nice power supply system. You power it from five volts, and um, all the all the uh, stuff on here is five volts, so it's five volt drive, five volt motors, which is pretty good. Most hobby stuff is five volts, especially the servos and um, motors. And then uh, it has NeoPixel with a buffered NeoPixel output as well. And um, an on off switch here. And it even has a protection. So I can, if I take a 12 volt adapter and you plug it in. It's okay. It's okay. It just says like, hey, your power is too high. It's got this cool protection chip on it that I found. So yeah, you've got um, your uh, H-Bridges, um, ULN 2008 drive. Mm. Want to do IoT robotics, Bluetooth robotics? You got all of the feather ecosystem with robotics. It now. works with any feather, and the reason mm -hmm. it works with any feather is that it has Seesaw, Seesaw, which is our I squared C to anything converter chip. So everything on this board is managed over I squared C. So even if you have an ESP8266, something that doesn't have almost any pins left over after you use I squared C, because everything's used for either bootstrapping or the LEDs. It's fine. You can still get those eight analog inputs, four capacitive touch, two motors. Like you don't, there's no worry about like, do I have enough timers on my what's it? Or, you know, what if I have a chip that can't really drive NeoPixels? Not a problem. You plug the feather in and this chip does all the I squared C conversion for you. And we have Arduino and make code and uh, circuit Python code for it. Okay. So it's great for, and then of course you can stack uh, feathers and featherings on top. So you have a feather and then an OLED feather wing, and then you need more servos, you can add a servo feathering on top. So you can just keep climbing up with the feather plug-in system as well. All so right. this is great for people who have feathers and they want to do robot projects or automatons. We said this was a big show. There's yeah. still more our favorite. How is it not we're tonight. done? How are we not done? Yeah. It's here. The Itsy Bitsy M4. It's here. It's got that Sam D51. It's running at 120 megahertz. It's got 512K of flash. It has 192K of RAM. It's got a ton of pins. It's got two analog outputs. It's got like seven analog inputs. Both of those are one mega sample per second. So you can do one mega sample per second input and output for analog, which is pretty cool. The only thing this doesn't have is I2S. Why? I don't know. Ask Microchip. For some reason, <laughs> on the 48 pin version of this chip, they took out I2S. I, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Show it there, or do you want to just keep going? Um, let me just show it. You know, these photos are like because it's so small. Okay. Um, so it's breadboard friendly. Um, it's got pins all the way around. It runs Circuit Python, or you can use our Arduino core. Either will work just fine. But the great thing is it's just so fast. 120 megahertz. This is just blindingly fast. Um, you know, we have the cache on. It has a floating point unit. So if you're doing stuff with floating point, where on almost every other Arduino compatible chip, you'd have to do that in software. It has um, single point floating point, single precision floating point support built in. It has DSP built in. Uh, so we ported the um, PJRC Teensy audio library to this to, to test out the DSP. And yeah, it can decode MP3s on the fly. It can do audio synthesis. Um, really cool, powerful chip with that dual DAC and multiple analog inputs. We have um, a small SPI flash chip on there uh, with two megabytes of SPI flash hooked up in QSPI mode. So we have a QSPI uh, library in Arduino and in CircuitPython we use QSPI natively. It's, it's so much, much faster than SPI. So you get, if you're running CircuitPython, you get that really good feeling of fast Python action. Like you're not feeling like it's sluggish or you're running out of memory. In fact, I have not been able to run out of memory while running the M4 series yet. You pretty much could write as much code as you want. And with 192K of RAM, like, which isn't a lot for a computer, but for CircuitPython, it's a ton. It's huge. Yeah, you can do a okay. lot. Big buffers. You know, you're like, just buffer all the data. Why not? You can. You have 192K. So that's the itsy bitsy uh, and a lovely chip. And then you know, maybe the Feather M4 coming soon. Okay. And that's your product.